All right, so um, today we're diving into a story that sounds like something straight out of like a you know one of those techno thriller movies, but this is real life, unfortunately, yeah. the NotPetya cyber attack. And uh, we're going deep on this one with excerpts from Andy Greenberg's book. It's uh, called "The Untold Story of NotPetya: The Most Devastating Cyber Attack in History." Mm -hmm. Crazy title. It was in Wired. <laughs> but uh, yeah, do we want to uncover how like you know just this one piece of malware? could bring like a huge company, I mean, a Titan and really the whole world to a standstill. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a wild one for sure. And, you know, it really highlights how connected everything is these days and how vulnerable really that makes us. And this wasn't just about like, you know, s some data getting stolen or leaked or anything. This was different. Not Petya was just pure destruction. OK, so like paint a picture for us. What was the situation before, you know, before it all went down? So picture this, right? It's a beautiful afternoon in Copenhagen, sunny, you know, just a normal day at the office and not just any office. We're talking Maersk headquarters, the biggest shipping company in the world. I mean, these guys are a big deal. So, you know, employees are just doing their thing when suddenly, bam, weird messages start popping up on their computers. Uh oh, yeah, uh, it was right. Turns out. Those messages, that was just the first little shake of a cyber earthquake. And nobody had any idea, right? If they did, they weren't saying. <laughs> but meanwhile, a thousand miles away, totally different story, you've got this, well, it seems like an ordinary accounting software company in Kiev called Linko's Group, and they're about to become ground zero for this whole thing. So you've got this, like, massive shipping company in Copenhagen and a software company in Kiev. How does this tie into the whole cyber warfare thing going on between Ukraine and Russia that Greenberg talks about? Right. So Ukraine was already in a pretty hot cyber war with Russia. Like they were getting hit with attacks all the time, everything from government stuff to their power grid. It was bad. It sounds kind of like like a testing ground almost, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like a way to see how cyber attacks could really impact the real world, which is scary to think about. And what happened to Maersk, as bad as it was, it wasn't even the main target. That was all aimed at Ukraine. So Maersk was just collateral damage. Basically. See, most people, when they think of ransomware, they think, okay, lock up some files, ask for money, right? But not Petya. This was different. Different how? I mean, Greenberg calls this thing the most devastating cyber attack in history. What makes it so much worse than, like, your typical ransomware? This wasn't about, you know, making a quick buck off some ransom. This was about causing as much damage as possible, like... Not Petya. It went after the master boot record, which is basically like the instruction manual for how a computer starts up. OK, so way worse than just locking people out of their files. Way worse. And Greenberg, he mentions uh, Eternal Blue mm -hmm. and Mimicats like those were involved, too. I'm guessing that's not like your everyday malware. Yeah, right? definitely not. It's nasty stuff. So you've got Eternal Blue, right? Wow. That was that NSA exploit that leaked a while back. It's basically like a skeleton key can get into tons of systems. Oh, right, right. And then you've got Mimicats coming in right behind it, stealing passwords from all those systems. Eternal Blue just unlocked and boom, suddenly not is spreading like crazy, jumping from one computer to the next. So like it's basically the digital equivalent of, I don't know, breaking down the door and then picking the locks on every room inside. Pretty much. But how did they even get mirrors with this thing? I mean, you think a company that big, they'd have, like, top-notch security. You'd think, right. But that's the thing about this stuff. It finds a way in, even the smallest crack. Remember that accounting software we were talking about? From Linko's group? Yeah, the one in Ukraine. Right, so that was compromised. And when a Maersk employee in Odessa installed it... Like, one employee? That's all it took. One employee. That's one computer. That's all it took to bring down, I mean, you know, a huge chunk of global shipping. Yeah. From there, it was like wildfire spread through their whole network. So one employee installing this like bad software update, and that's all it took to bring down like a huge chunk of global shipping. Crazy. So what happened was not Pedia was inside. I mean, Greenberg, he doesn't hold back. It sounds like it was mayhem. Mayhem is a good word for it. Thousands of shipping containers. I mean, just frozen, stuck up, ports all over the place. Trucks backed up for miles, couldn't even get near the ports. And the businesses that relied on Maersk, I mean, talk about panic, they were freaking out. This wasn't just like, oh, Maersk's computers are down. This was a global crisis. And then to make things worse, it's like they weren't even prepared for something like this, right? I mean, no backups of the domain controllers. Are you kidding me? It's, 
Yeah, not great. Like, they had backup, sure, but only of individual servers, not the domain controllers, which is, you know, that's like the brain of their whole system. Huge vulnerability. Yeah. If they hadn't found that one server, that one in Ghana that got knocked offline by a power outage, who knows how long it would have taken them to get back up and running. Talk about a close call. Yeah. But finding that server, that was just the start, right? What they even have to do to recover from something like this? It was insane. Imagine having to, like, rebuild your entire network from scratch. I'm talking 4,000 servers, 45,000 PCs in 10 days. 10 days. 10 days. That's what they were up against. Right. Teams working around the clock, buying every laptop they could find, pulling all-nighters. They couldn't even use their work emails. They were using, like, personal accounts and WhatsApp just to communicate. It was wild. I can't even imagine the like the pressure. So this wasn't just about lost money and you know IT guys working overtime. Greenberg, he talks about some of the people who got caught in the middle of all this. It's easy to forget, you know, with all the tech talk that there are real people behind all this. Like Henrik, he was an IT administrator in their Copenhagen office. He just watched as like every screen around him went dark, just like that. Or Pablo, he was a freight forwarder in Spain. Suddenly he's got clients screaming at him because their stuff is stuck on a boat somewhere. Their lives were upended by this. It's a good reminder that cyber attacks, I mean, they have real world consequences. So what was the point of it all? Was Maersk really just collateral damage? That's the million dollar question, right? Some people think it was a warning shot you know, Russia showing what they could do. Others think maybe they were covering their tracks after planting something even worse. Even worse. Who knows? That's the scary part. We might never know the whole story. That's unsettling. So what do we, what can we even learn from all this? If it happened to a company like Maersk, what does that mean for the average person? Not pet yet. It was a wake up call. Showed everyone just how vulnerable we all are. Critical infrastructure, supply chains, nobody's immune. So what can we even do? We got to be smart. We got to stay informed. And we have got to be proactive, protecting ourselves and our data. Cybersecurity, it's not just an IT problem. It's everyone's problem. It's kind of scary, but it's true. Well, this has been uh, eye-opening, to say the least. It really makes you think. Thanks for breaking it all down for us. Anytime. Glad to do it. And to everyone listening, stay curious, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next Deep Dive.